Hi, I'm Lukey from The Outpost, and today we're going to talk about single action shooting. Single action is a shooting sport designed around the spirit of the Old West. Competitors will go through courses of fire using period firearms and dressed in period attire. During the courses of fire, you'll use a lever action or pump action rifle, a lever action coach gun or pump action shotgun, and two single action revolvers. Caveat is that all those firearms need to be of a design pre-1900, meaning that they are of the Old West in terms of look and function. Here in Australia, we use the Single Action Shooting Society's international rules. That means that because the firearms being used are permissible for sporting shooters here in Australia, if an Australian shooter wants to go and compete over in the United States, you don't have to adapt to a new platform. We're using, for all intents and purposes, all the same gear that they are over in the United States on the world stage. Unlike uh, sports like Three Gun or IPSC or other matches where a lot of those platforms are not available to Australian shooters as sporting shooters, here in single action, it's all a level playing field. So before we get started talking about the gear that we use in single action, it's probably a good time to disclaim that it's a really good idea to go to a match before you buy anything. There are many people there who will be happy to help you out, lend you gear, and offer advice as to what you may or may not use in a match. This way, you avoid buying something that is either inappropriate to use or that might not suit your needs. That out of the road, let's talk about some of the gear you might see at a cowboy action match. So the first thing we'll talk about is pistols. It is called single action or cowboy action interchangeably. The single action comes from the revolvers that are used. So on every stage, you use a pair of single action revolvers. Single action meaning you must pull back the hammer first before you can fire the shot. Um, like a double action where you can just keep pulling the trigger and it will also pull the hammer back as you pull the trigger. The most common revolvers you'll see out on the range are Ruger Vaqueros and 1873 single action army clones. You'll see them in all sorts of calibers. If you want to go old school and go to what the original calibers would have been, you see 4440, uh, 3220, 2520, those sort of calibers. More commonly is 357 Magnum slash 38 Specials. So much easier to get a hold of 38 Special ammo, brass, reloading components, etc. Uh, and they can be used alongside the period correct ammo with no problems at all. There are three ways to shoot your single action revolvers. The first is what's called traditional. That is both hands on the one pistol at one time. You can use your off hand to cock the pistol and your shooting hand to shoot it. The second way is called duelist. This is shot one pistol out at a time, one hand unsupported. The hand that fires the gun must also cock the gun. The third type is called gunfighter. This is where both pistols are drawn at once and shot akimbo. Five shots coming from the right hand, five shots coming from the left hand. To go along with your single action revolvers, you'll also need a lever or pump action rifle. As we said, pre-1900 design. Now it's very important to note here that these need to be a pistol caliber lever or pump. So 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, 45 Colt are some of the more common ones you'll see on the range. Things like a 3030 lever action or 4570, any of those classed as a rifle caliber are not okayed for use in single action main match. There are side matches you can use them for, however in single action main match, pistol caliber rifles only. Some common lever action rifles you'll see out on the range are Uberti 1873s and Marlin 1894s, as well as Winchester 92 and copies thereof, so such as Rossi and Chiappas. It's also worth noting that the Henry Big Boy is also okayed for use in single action matches. Lastly, you'll need your shotgun. Shotguns that are okay for use include side-by-side -side coach guns with no ejectors, lever action shotguns of the Winchester 1887 design, so the IAC and Chiapa make copies of those, and 1897 pump action shotguns with exposed hammers. In most states in Australia, pump action shotguns are not okayed for use as sporting firearms for this particular match, and so you're left with the 1887 levers and coach guns. The 1887 levers are not allowed to have more than two rounds put in them at once. So any advantage you might gain from having the magazine fed is not there. It's also worth noting that when we say a lever action shotgun, it must be of that pre-1900 design. Adlers, Partises and otherwise need not apply. 
That leaves you with a coach gun, side by side, no ejectors. This is the most common sort of shotgun you'll see at a single action match, and it's also the most common amongst some of the best shooters in the world. Most people find it easier to use and also just as effective as using a pump or a lever. While many people do take care to dress up and create a persona out of their costume, by all means you do not need to have the most flashiest B Western outfit on the range. At a bare minimum, blue jeans, a set of boots, a long sleeve button up shirt and a wide brimmed hat is all you need to get started. Depending on what category you're shooting in, there are certain costume requirements in B Western and Classic Cowboy. There are lists of items that you have to have on your body at all times to be considered in those categories. Many people do take the time to dress up and create their own persona, which would go along with their SAS alias. All shooters on a range will have an alias of an Old West character or name that they go by while at the shoot. And to register, it's very easy. You can do it online for both here and in the States. Most disciplined captains at any match will have alias registration forms or can point you to them. So to go along with your clothing and your alias, you'll also need some leather work. In order to get around in the stages, you'll need somewhere to put your revolvers and your spare shotgun shells on your body so that you can get through the course of fire and have the correct amount of ammunition and firearms on your person. That having been said, you don't have to have any of these items to go to a match and have a go. Let's go through from the shooter's point of view what you'd see at a match. So I've made my way to the loading table where I've loaded my rifle with 10 rounds, my pistols with five rounds each, and my shotgun shells are in a belt on my person ready to be used. Here I've loaded my firearms up and been called to the firing line by the range officer to stage my long arm safely. In this case, I'm gonna stage my rifle on the right hand table and my shotgun on tombstone in the middle of the stage. I'll quickly go through the course of fire in my head. In this case, I'm going to knock down the six shotgun targets first, followed by my rifle, followed by my pistol. The hands are starting in a bound position in front of me. I will then say the line which indicates to the RO that I'm ready. Let's go for a run. Shoot up. Stand by. Once the beep has gone off, I'll knock down these six targets from in between the two middle poles. From there, I will discard my shotgun, pick up my rifle, and put two rounds on each of the rifle targets. Once I've done that, I discard my rifle and put two rounds each on the pistol targets in front of me. I then move with my firearms pointing in a safe direction to the unloading table, where under the supervision of the unloading officer, I will clear out all my firearms from spent cases and make sure they are cleared and empty before I leave the firing line. As you saw, we shoot at steel targets at relatively close distances, seven and 10 meters. As such, the ammunition we use has to reflect that. No jacketed bullets are allowed to be used at a single action match. There are also maximum velocities that must be adhered to. 1,000 feet per second for pistols and 1,400 feet per second for rifles. This is to ensure that the targets aren't damaged and to minimize any chance of splatter coming back at the shooters. As a happy side effect of this, it's very commonplace to see reduced power loads being used on cowboy action ranges. There's very little recoil in most of these rifles and pistols and the shotgun rounds used are special shotgun rounds that are low recoil, low noise target loads. It makes it very enjoyable for new shooters and those who are more recoil sensitive. At every match, you'll see both a loading and an unloading area. The loading area is where you'll take your cleared firearms up and all the ammunition you'll need for the stage and load them up safely. Once you're at the loading table with all your firearms loaded, you will then be called to the course of fire by the range officer. Once you're through the course of fire, you'll be taken to the unloading area. Under the supervision of the unloading officer, you'll clear all your firearms before being allowed to leave the firing line. It's a very easy to follow process for new shooters as the instructions and areas are very clear and easy to understand. Before every course of fire, there will be a stage briefing given out by the range officer or posse leader. This is the order in which you have to engage the targets and where from. Targets are scored hit or miss. There is no points for being more accurate to the center or to the outside of the target. It is hit or miss scoring only. Procedural errors are when you engage the targets in the incorrect order or from the incorrect spot. Procedural errors are worth 10 seconds of penalties. Misses are worth five seconds each. It's a much better idea if you're a new shooter to slow down and get your hits. Even when not shooting, you'll see everyone milling about doing odd jobs that you need to do at a match. 
spotting, picking up brass, resetting targets and the like. This is a very important part of the sport and is expected by all competitors. Cowboy action has something for everyone. Whether you just want to go to your local range and have a bit of fun at a monthly match, or if like me, you feel a bit of that competitive urge, there are state, regional, national, and international matches you can go and test your skills at against the best cowboy action shooters in the world. As someone who's shot at the highest level internationally, I can from first-hand experience tell you that the community is the same. Fun people who are out there to give it a go, be safe, and enjoy the cowboy way of things.